Yeah, sure. My name is Jacob Gordon and I am a grade five, six teacher in uh, a little town called Hawksdale. And we work at a school that is from uh, five years old to 18 years old. So we work from a, a pre-kinder or a prep to 12 years, uh, to year 12, so final years of schooling in Australia. Hello, sir. Hello, how are you? I'm fine, sir. How are you, sir? I'm very well, enjoying my day off with uh, my child and my dog. This is Subramanya Sushinwas, a seventh grade student. I would like to ask a question. Can I ask, sir? Yes, of course. Is reading and writing taught to every student at primary and secondary schools? Yes, yes. So every every student has to do reading and writing uh, right from five years old to 18 years old. And you have to do it. Otherwise, you get in lots of trouble. What is your style? Bye. Yes. What is my style? Yes. Uh, my style is that whatever... So I like to have a focus on something. So let's say at the moment, my students are arguing about things of like what is right and what is just in society. And so at the moment we are learning about how to argue. And so what I'm doing is I'm showing them books about all different ways to argue and teaching them and getting them to read books about arguing. So debating, I don't know if you have debating in, in India. Yes, yes, we do have the debating, but we don't uh... Uh, include incorporate uh, this debating or argument method in our teaching. So most of our yeah. teachers are one-sided and uh, the teacher has, is supposed to teach and the listener, the student is supposed to listen. And uh, there, yeah. there might not be any argument and counter-argument, but I like this uh, approach of uh, argument and counter-argument. Then only the teacher and the student uh, get involved, get engaged in an active uh, participation. Am I right? Yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. So if I let the students sometimes choose what they want to do, yes. so I'll say to them, what is it you want to work on and what, do you, what is it that you want to learn? And the students say what they want to learn. And then what I do as a teacher is I go ahead and I might go to the library and get all the books on the things that they want to learn. And then I'll bring them into class and then I'll share them with them. And then that is our overall subject okay with reading but then that also encourages our writing so then what we do from reading is that we read about arguing and then we go and write about arguing and write how to write letters learn how to write emails learn how to um persuade someone to do something that you want them to do okay. so then i teach them i teach them to think about what they don't like and then I teach them how to write to change that because I want my students to be able to change the way the world thinks. Uh, Jack, I have a, I have a supplementary question in this regard. Uh, do all the teachers teach in the same method that you adopt in teaching the argument and the counter argument? No, no. no. So sometimes within writing, all teachers are to teach how to write persuasive letters, but not all teachers approach that in the same way. So as a teacher, you can say, well, you have to find the right school. Some schools will tell you, you have to teach a certain way. And if you find the right school, then they will teach you how, they will say to you, you can teach however way you want to teach. Okay. So I'm very lucky that I've worked at a different range of schools. So I've taught in across Victoria, in the mm -hmm. state, state of Australia, okay. but I've also taught in England and mm -hmm. I've taught in uh, a few weeks in Nepal as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So have you been to India? I uh, No, I have not been to India, no. I'd like to one day for sure. Yes, so we are going to give you the hospitality if you happen to come to India. It's our great privilege. Ah, be beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> great. Yeah, thank you. Tedipia, over to you. Yes, sir. Hello, sir. This is Teddy Pia, a seventh grader. Can very fast. Very good. What emphasizes is given to extracurricular activities in your school? Two. 
So we can choose whatever we want to teach. So I teach ICT and I teach about Aboriginal studies, which is about Aboriginal Australians. I don't know if you know too much about that. And I teach history and I teach, um, and I teach what's called STEM, which is like science, technology, engineering, and math. Well, the, the things that we prioritize with our subjects are reading, writing, and math, and then everything else like science and technology uh, probably gets one session a week, so one hour, where reading takes five hours a week, so one hour each day, and writing is five hours a week, so one hour each day, and math is six hours. Okay, thank a you. Week. My children's book. So I wrote this book. So I'm an author as well as a teacher. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. And yeah, and so it's just about COVID and about people sticking together. And I wrote it with a really good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's really important to always, always go over your writing and um, always have a go. Just have a go and don't worry about everything else. Yes. If you just have a go at writing and then double check it and double check it until you get it right. But don't ever give up writing because it's a beautiful thing. Yes. So I always uh, prioritize the handwriting because nowadays is, uh, most of the students, the global citizens, they are using the, the computers. So they, in fact, no need to use their handwriting. Uh, but uh, in India, we still uh, take the examinations, uh, literally, we have to take the examination uh, using the pen and a pencil. So where the mm -hmm. handwriting uh, plays a pivotal role, and if your handwriting is good, uh, you can be awarded good marks. If your handwriting is bad, you can be awarded the bad marks. So that always reflects it. So, in Australia, handwriting is still used when you take the examinations or do you take the examinations digitally? Uh, we still handwrite in our exams. Yeah, we still handwrite. But there's not as much of a push with handwriting anymore because people, a lot of people are using technology. Yes. However, uh, I still teach handwriting because... There's a lot of research that talks about how you can remember things much better if you handwrite them. Yes. Because it's about it's about your muscles and using your muscles in the right way. So more muscles are used to handwrite, which means that it gets burned into the memory better when you're handwriting. So there's a lot of benefit from mm. handwriting rather than typing. But a lot of the world is going to typing. And what we're seeing in a lot of students is that they are forgetting things when they type them. They're not remembering all their notes. They're not going back over their notes. So there's all types of understanding of, of how we learn as people, but it's we're not necessarily visual learners or we're not necessarily kinesthetic movement learners. We're, not we're actually all types of learners. Yes. So we just need to try and do everything, reading, writing, listening, watching, and doing. So those kinds of things that you gain more from handwriting than you do from typing. Yes, absolutely. I do agree with you. Jagadish, what about you? Yes, sir. Hello, sir. Hello. How are How you, sir? How do I say your name? I'm very good. How do I say your name? Hello, sir. My name is Jagadish. I am studying 8th grade at JPH School, Ilaram. Can I ask you a question, sir? Of course. Jagadish. What is what is your teaching philosophy? That's a good question. What is my teaching philosophy? Uh, so I like to do purposeful learning. So my teaching philosophy matches a, a guy called a man or a educator called John Dewey, who does purposeful learning tasks. And he says that even though you might fail at some learning tasks, the learning is within the is within actually doing the, the task rather than whether it succeeds or fails. So I always get my students to uh, do a project and then 
Um, we have the school community come in and we like parents and friends and um, everyone in the town to come and see what my students have created. So therefore, for example, this term, I told, I told you about reading and writing. I told you that what we're doing in reading and writing is that we're doing um, arguing or debating and we're doing persuading in our writing. And so at the end of when we learn about all of this, my students are going to have what's called a great debate and they're going to um, choose something to argue about, whether that's an extra day on the weekend or whether that's... Um... Hi, sir. How are you, Hello. sir? Hello. I'm very well. How are you? Hi, sir. My name is Farina. I'm a the student. I'm from GPHS Ilevaram. Here, my question is, what subject are taught in your school? What subject? Are taught in your school. What subjects are taught in my school? Lots. Lots of different subjects. Yes, business management, business management, accounting, uh, reading, writing, of course, math, um, science, technology, engineering, and um, even robotics. We learn robotics and we learn um, biology and chemistry and we learn um, history, as I said before. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Is that a good answer or not good? Hello, sir. I am Sain Agassi. Oh, I'm an I would like to ask a question, can I? Yes, of course. What schools are popular in Victoria, public or private? Um, more, I guess, more public. There's probably more public schools in in the area than there are private. There's a few private, but we also have religious schools. So we have uh, Christian schools and Catholic schools, uh, which can be considered private, but not really. They're in the middle. But we have most public schools. Okay, thank you. Rugved Vardhani, over to you. Hello, sir. Hello. This is Rugveda Vardini, an eighth grader in GPHS Ilavaram. I am glad to interact with you. Here, my question is What do you think is the best way to improve writing skills? What is the best way to improve writing skills? Uh, skills? Write lots. Write lots. Don't stop writing. Just write, write, write. Always. The more you write, the better off you are. Okay, so it could be anything that you want to write. You, if you don't want to write anything massive, then just write a list about all the things that you love. If you don't want to write that, then write about all the things that you don't love. If you don't want to write about that, write about what you see in front of you or write a story about your family or write um, a letter to somebody to explain about the things that you love. You can write anything, even if it's just funny words. Yes, thank you. Thank you, sir. Dikshit, wow, team. No worries, thank you. Yes, sir. Hello. Hello, sir. How are you, sir? How are you doing? I'm well. I'm really good. It's a bit dark here, but that's okay. How are you? I'm fine, sir. Thank you. My name thank is you. Dikshit. I'm a sound grader. I would like to ask a question, sir. Sure, this is. What is Victoria famous for? Victoria is not famous for too much. Uh, Victoria, as a state, this is my daughter, this is Sylvia. Say Hi. Hi. <laughs> so cute. What's your name? Uh, Victoria, uh, this is Sylvia. Okay. You can't hear you. I've got the headphones in. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'll, put, I'll put her on. Here you go. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, no, you don't want to hear. Okay. <laughs> he doesn't want to hear. Um, yeah, so Victoria is not famous for much, but we do have uh, the city of Melbourne, which is uh, a very busy city. Um, it's got a lot of people, probably not as much as uh, capital cities in India, that's for sure. Um, and it's got really nice areas. So we've got a nice mountain range. We've got nice waterfalls. We've got nice beaches. 
We've got, uh, so I actually live on the beach, so you won't be able to see it very well, but outside my window is the beach. I don't know if you can see it, but it's right at the back, it's right like out there. Yes, yes, yes. There you can it's see. very gray. Yeah, it's very gray today. It's not very nice weather today. Yes, yes. Yes. Um, Jagab, I have a question regarding the public school system in your country. So what kind of yeah. technology and what kind of infrastructure facilities are placed in your schools? And in India, public schools and private schools, there is, there is a big difference in terms of infrastructure facilities and as well as that using the technology. So yeah. how different your public schools from the private schools and what kind of technology is used and what kind of infrastructure facilities are placed in your public institutions? Well, it's very different at our school because we're a primary and secondary school in one. So we've got technology that I guess other schools don't, other public schools don't always have in terms of primary school. So we have things like um, lots of different microscopes. We have, so we've got science labs that um, have uh, different kinds of chemicals and everything like that that we can dissect and, and explore. We've got Bunsen burners. Um, we've got a 3D printer, which is actually broken at the moment, but we're getting it fixed. We have um, iPads that students use that's provided in the school, and we have laptops for the primary school area as well. So lots of different things. And then we use, hello, we use TV. Um, we use TV and digital screens as well to um, explore internet resources and get students working on the internet. So, for example, if I was going to teach the children around a certain type of word, then I might get it, get them to go online and research for themselves, and then we'll come back together as a class and then talk about what we found out. Great. So, uh, teachers, uh, in fact, uh, today the the current teachers across the globe, I think, need to update their professional knowledge from time to time and uh, to update the ourselves with the changing the uh, scenarios. So, how often do the teachers in Australia and Victoria have the training sessions, and how often they have the orientation classes to update their professional knowledge? Yeah, so we we actually meet every week to update our professional knowledge on different varying things. However, I guess when it's technology based, you might have a technology teacher who will go out and and learn new skills, um, get new technology, um, and bring it back to the school. So exploring um, mapping devices or anything like that, they might bring that back to the school. That we might use it. Um, so even within science and technology engineering and math side of things, then we might uh, explore those kinds of things um, and work on that. Yeah, thank you. Does so that we have your question? Sorry? 10, more, 10 more minutes time is left. So in these 10 more yeah, yeah, minutes, okay. yes, I would like to ask you a few questions. Uh, so what kind of provisions or facilities uh, are provided to the students uh, that come to the public schools? For instance, if you take uh, my public school system, Students are given the free test books, free uniform, and free meal, and everything is free to the students that come to the public uh, schools. So, how about there in uh, Australia? And do all the students get the free meal and free test books and free uniform and uh, any other free provisions given to the students? Uh, so, we in the primary school is different from the secondary school. So in primary school, we supply the students with, um, we don't use textbooks, but we supply the students with reading books. We supply the students with their workbooks. We supply students with their stationery, so pencils and pens. We supply students with uh, laptops as well and iPads. And we supply students with, um, yeah, any other, any other learning necessities. But never, we don't supply students with textbooks. And we don't supply students with food. So um, students are expected to bring their own lunch uh, to school with them. And then we give them time uh, to have fruit and, and eat their lunch together. And then they go out and play. 
and uh, one more question if any student is not behaving properly if he is uh, a bit unruly in the classroom so what kind of punishment is meted out to the student do you punish him physically or do you give them counseling or do you inform the their parents about their bad behavior yeah so it's it's illegal to hurt students um that's not that's just not something that australian uh, australian schooling system allows um and even if it did then i still wouldn't do it <laughs> um if a student is if a student is acting upset or if a student is upsetting somebody um, or even interrupting the class time, then there's a reason why. So is that because the student has had a difficult morning? Is that because the student is um, wanting to have my attention? Is that because the student is feeling um, overwhelmed with the work perhaps or maybe underwhelmed with the work? Is the work not hard enough or is the work too hard? So there's all these different factors that we have to take into consideration. And, I, and this is the thing is that we really need to understand each other and understanding and a, and a student is no better or no, no better than a teacher. A teacher, we're all human, you know, so we're all experiencing life. Yes. And our reaction, you know, we need to teach students how to behave. We need to teach students when things go wrong, we don't yell, we don't get upset, you know? When things go wrong, we don't throw things around. When things go, so we have to teach people to be humans these days. And that's really, really important. And that when things are, when things are going wrong, or for us as people, then we need to approach it with a calm mind and an emotional understanding. So part of my role as a teacher as well is to teach people about feelings and how to act when we have feelings. And so, I supply an area for my students if there's if there's a problem. I supply an area in my classroom that students can go to and just unwind. Uh, there might be things in there like a trampoline. There might be things in there to hold, uh, anything uh, to create comfort for the student. And then um, when they're ready to talk, I say, when you're ready, let's have a chat and see what we can do better next time. And I always go and check in on those students to say, all right, what is it next that we, we want to look at? Okay, what's next on our plan? If this is going wrong, what can you do? Okay, thank you. And how the how are the teachers recruited in your public school system? And uh, so do you have any special drive to recruit the teachers from time to time? If your teacher gets retired from school, so in uh, what time? That means uh, uh, soon after his retirement, uh, a new teacher is appointed in his place or do you need to wait for a few days or a few months? So uh, you can just hire a teacher. If, if you've got a, a vacant spot in the school, the principal will put an advertisement out on the internet um, and then you will have a graduate position. So if you're a teacher um, that's just come out of university, then that's a graduate position and they're a lot cheaper. And also able to teach how to teach so it's a really good opportunity i guess for um teachers to come in to a new school and learn a different way and they'll be given a 12-month contract um and then they can teach at the school for 12 years and if the school wants to keep them on or if the teacher wants to stay on after those 12 months they can stay on if the teacher um has an opportunity to go to a new school and wants to learn more or wants to go to a different school, then they can do that. You can get an ongoing position, which is um, as basically you've got, a, you've got a position at the school forever. Um, so you can take a year, a year off to, if you're going to have children or uh, any of that kind of thing, you can take a year off and come back to your job and know that it's still there. Okay. So the way that recruitment goes is the principal decides or there's a panel of teachers that will go and interview a teacher and say, all right, what do we like about this person? And then they, um, sorry, hang on. <laughs> and, then they, and then they decide from that point on whether they like the teacher and if the teacher is right for the school. And then they will ask questions and then um, about the, the teacher's teaching philosophy, um, about how they act with students. Um, and then they, 
and then they go ahead and, and yeah, hire the teacher and then they're part of the school. You want to hear it? Yeah. So what, what is the, here is my last question. What is the retirement age in Australia for teachers? Ah, the age. Sorry, I went on a ramble about something completely different. Um, the age of retirement is from uh, 50, 55 onwards. So you can, you can go into a, a part retirement around 55, but a lot of teachers still keep teaching until in this late 60s, 70s. How is how is the the salaries paid to the public schools teachers and compared to the private schools? Are they higher than the private schools? Are they lower than the private schools? Uh, lower than the private schools. Yeah, lower than the private schools. A graduate teacher salary starts at um, seventy thousand, and then pay goes up around three thousand a year, three to five thousand. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. And 